is it compulsory to hearth neutral uh, and body separately for three phase generator or single hearth electrode would be sufficient as i said see there is nothing called the separate this uh, making this separate separate is the danger number one so we we must connect everything together there is only one electrical safety rule equipotential bonding this separate separate is because of the misinterpretation of the standards of course uh, this will create a much more danger uh, as i said in one of the uh, one of the slide uh, there are systems called as tns the tn ts the tt we are supposed to follow the rules of each and every you know the the, the uh, requirements of those uh, uh, networks can you listen yes Yes, yes. What I what, uh, what I understand in IS standard, it's very clearly given all the three different type of uh, system like TNS as you said. And in India, we have a TNS system, right? Yeah, TNS. And uh, one thing also, I think you little bit explain to everybody that once you connect all the metallic part, all the metallic part, including windows, doors. What are what are metal are in, in the building? All metallic part connected to the liquid potential bar, right? And then, uh, uh, do you make an earth pit and connect the earth pit with the equipotential potential bar? Uh, if you have a TT connection, TT connection is generally used, uh, you know, for the public electricity distribution. Uh, mm -hmm. You have a transformer from the utility. In that particular case, uh, you mandatorily require a connection to one connection, one building, one connection to the soil because you need to dissipate the current to the soil. Since yeah. we are supposed to follow TNS or TNCS, TNS for if you have your own transformer and TNCS where you have uh, uh, the uh, public distribution, actually the you have to fit in soil doesn't play any major role. Whereas the fault return path to the neutral of the transformer as a metallic conductor, that is more important. Mm. Mm. But, uh, so the, the, course, it is not necessary that the... Sorry. Yeah, sir. Uh, of course, a building uh, requires uh, a connection to soil. The number one requirement of uh, uh, making a connection to an earth electrode in soil is to dissipate the lightning current. Yeah, so for right. the purpose of dissipating lightning current, of course, you require an earth electrode in soil. For all the other purposes of safety, you actually don't require an earth pit in soil, including the performance of a highly sensitive electric electronic appliance. So even if there is a uh, dead short circuit, uh, phase to phase short circuit, or maybe phase to earth short circuit, uh, the fault uh, current generated. Uh, you don't need to pass it through the earth. No, it always goes to the current, leave the source and return back to the source. We have to make an efficient way for the current to go back to the source. Okay. So in TT That's system, uh, because of the distance between the transformer and the consumer installation, running yeah. a fixed conductor is long, so you put an earth and put an RCB. Uh, but sometimes what happens, I mean, you might also observe that the utility distribution companies, there are thing is very poor. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe sometimes it doesn't work also. So in that case, do you think that we, we should connect our equipotential bar to the uh, soil? Yes. Yeah, uh, if the utility, say for example, if the utility earthing is a system, uh, you know, we have to make a follow a TNCS system in that particular case. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there are these there are very clear definitions in the regulation and in the IS 3043 uh, how to make it. Say, for example, public electricity distribution, the class 4 of IS 3043. So there is very clear definition how to handle the uh, situation. Yeah, but I mean, it's... Uh, uh, what I would say that when you come out of the engineering college, you are taught theories, but I mean, those uh, design parameters, design uh, codes and practice are not taught. They will teach you maybe a, how to design a generator, how to design a transformer, how to design an electrical motor, but they will not uh, teach you how to design your electrical system, how to make it more safe. Uh, so that in case of any uh, problem, either it's an overcurrent or, or a short circuit, how the tripping devices should trip, 
what should be the uh, tipping devices, what should be the earth loop impedance, like you said it. I, I was in other country, but there, you know, it was compulsory to measure uh, earth loop impedance. Here, I mean, it is, it is my experience, I mean, I should not say it, but, I mean, hardly any contractor do any testing before uh, switching on the installation. Yes, unfortunately. Every, once everything is ready, switch on, light chalo ho gai, khatam. <laughs> Yes, this is unfortunately, this is what is happening. Yeah, I mean, then this could lead to fire. Uh, Gopaji, uh, as you said that this topic is, you know, I mean, it's a quite, quite big one. And I mean, it's uh, not possible to cover it within this one hour. Do you think that we can have a second webinar uh, on, on detail of this design uh, parameters? Uh, it is possible, sir. We can make uh, another because, uh, you know, now I could see some of the questions. Uh, uh, one question uh, I could see is how will you summarize uh, your presentation? And the second uh, question is uh, uh, what is your suggestion to minimize the number of earthing for neutral earthing? So, uh, as I said, sir, please understand the earthing means the measures, the safety measures. Uh, created in a building in order to avoid shock and uh, to ensure that your protective device is tripping within the time so that a fire hazard is avoided. So earthing actually it has nothing to do with the earth pit in soil. Earth pit is a part of your earthing system. Your earthing system consists of a main bus bar, an equipotential bonding conductor, different protective uh, bonding conductors, and finally an earth pit. Earth pit is only a very small part in the total earthing system. And that part, uh, the earth pit in soil is mandatory only for, uh, you know, to dissipate the lightning current to soil. Now, once when you dissipate the lightning current to soil, that particular earth pit, the earth pit for dissipating the lightning current and the main panel board earth bus bar, both must be interconnected together. And uh, that is what is shown in one of the pictures. Uh, the, the extraneous conductive part, uh, let us say a down conductor of the lightning production system and the uh, main earth bus bar of the uh, building, both has to be interconnected together and the impedance of their connection shall offer certain minimum resistance. And if the resistance is higher, then it will lead to other failures. So basically what I wanted to tell you is, uh, please don't think that the earthing means the earth pit. Earthing and the earth pit are you know, totally two different ideas. The earth pit is a small item in earthing, that's it. So now a next question, what is your suggestion to minimize the number of earthing of neutral and earthing? Uh, again, the same question, I, say, I, I hope I already same, answered same. it. Yeah. What is the number of earth pits and all are interconnected? What will there be uh, not equipotential? Yeah, one of the practice which we follow in India, you know, we have uh, maybe 20, 30, 40 earth pits in soil and under the soil we interconnect everything together. That is not the correct way. The correct way is at the main uh, incoming panel you must interconnect and inside the building because people are living inside the building. A fire accident is going to happen inside the building. So you need more and more interconnection inside the building. Under the soil, of course, in order to uh, reduce the step potential, you can have it. But it doesn't mean you interconnect under the soil and forget all the other things. This is wrong. So, what happens, you know, I, I, I've seen many uh, specifications given by the client. They said for this system, we need 5 ohms earth resistance. For this system, we require 2 ohms earth resistance. Like that, you know. And so the as a designer, you know, he will calculate getting the soil resistivity uh, from the uh, soil test. Uh, that how many earth pits I require and to connect it in parallel so that, you know, I achieve two ohms or five ohms or three or whatever it may be. So that's the reason, you know, people always are thinking of how many number of earth pits are required. True. Sir. <laughs> Actually, this is a, also, I would say this is a big uh, challenge in India to educate the whole mass of electrical engineers that this is not a thing. So in most yeah. of the projects, we also come across this uh, challenge, uh, asking, okay, you make a soil resistivity test and so on. 
yes of course yeah. you need to make a soil resistivity test and find out the soil resistance because you need to make an earthing system to dissipate lightning current for that particular purpose this is useful yeah otherwise uh, you don't uh, need it actually yeah and these requirements such as uh, you know uh, electronic equipment vendor always say i need uh, one ohm earth pit actually yeah. it's a misinterpretation you don't require it you need a functional earthing conductor functional earthing means you have different kind of electronic appliances in your building and all the electronic appliances may be communicating between each other maybe you have a, a server you have a, a pc or something communicating you have a camera you have a bms system and these electronic appliances those who are communicating each other you need to have an earthing system which is offering a near to zero uh, voltage drop in the earthing system mm. as a result the uh, the earth plane is at the common and uh, you know your electronic appliances will communicate very efficient so that uh, subject is called as functional earthing so i didn't touch anything on functional earthing what we discussed is about the safety earthing functional earthing is again a different subject but again i would repeat that functional earthing has nothing to do with the earth pit in soil mm, yeah, there yeah, is also right. the ways to make an interconnection so sir there is one more question it is heard that 30 million per tripping elcb to be used any base reason for that yes of course you, you know the current through the body is creating uh, uh, is the hazard if the current is uh, more than certain limit and more than certain duration of course the current flow will create uh, uh ventricular fibrillation or maybe burning or uh, other issues so in order to limit the current flow through the body the elcb actually the word elcb we should not use it is called as rcd residual current device rccb mm. is the correct wording so if you use an rccb or an rcd once when the current is more than 30 milliampere immediately the device trips so it gives a protection measure called as direct protection direct contact even if somebody touches a live conductor nothing happens to the person because the elcb will trip so the 30 milliampere rating is based on the uh, the tolerable limit of current with which a human being can handle without much problem so this is the set limit more than 30 milliampere is dangerous for a human being so a uh, why mcb uh, uh, fire without trip one it's... more question why mcb uh, fire uh, without a trip of course if uh, imagine you have an mcb and i have shown you uh, the one of the uh, slide i have shown you the i don't know whether you can see the slide uh, the parameter called as fault loop impedance i just put a, a circuit uh, moment please let me go to that slide no, no. yeah somewhere the next to the previous one yeah this one so imagine uh, you have this ocpd stands for the mcb imagine uh, on the right side you have the equipment and there is uh, something happened to the equipment uh, and there is a short circuit in the equipment and now what happens is the current will flow through this particular uh, mcb through the whole circuit and the circuit imagine you have a small circuit with uh, maybe which can handle 10 amperes of current for certain duration and but this fault current maybe will be 20 amps or 30 amps and this current flow for a longer duration of course what will happen is the weakest part in this circuit will bust or will catch fire most often the weakest part is the internal system inside your circuit breaker as a result what will happen is instead of tripping it will explode in lot of cases yes this is what is happening because the mcb require certain current to trip and if that particular current is not enough number one there there can be a danger number two imagine a situation where the fault loop is very very small instead of here i put a 0.4 ohm instead of 0.4 ohm imagine it's very very small once when it is very very small the current will be much higher there is a parameter for an mcb which is called as the ultimate breaking capacity or the the uh, the capacity of the current with which the mcb is able to trip safely imagine you have a 6 kilo ampere mcb uh, maybe a 32 amps 6k mcb 
and if the current the fault current through the mcb is higher than 6k of course there is a chance that the mcb may blast because the fault current is higher so fault current cannot be higher cannot be lower so we have to both uh, cases create the problem so we have to select the system in uh, in such a way so let me look at the next question i think that's all there is i cannot so i mean as, as you said that, that the earth loop impedance is being defined in ic standards and uh, uh, which you can uh, achieve by using a proper type of wire this class 2 and class 3 class 4 class 5 so uh, as a designer one must check when uh, you know it designs what is the length of the circuit and out of, from that circuit how what would be your uh, earth loop impedance uh, and I mean, you said that uh, class 2 has a lower resistance and class 5 or class 6 has a higher resistance. So, I mean, do, uh, uh, we must follow uh, class 2 wires or we must use class 2 wire in order to achieve the required equipotential resistance, right? So, yes, I mean, uh, uh, as you said that because of the different resistance, because of the uh, strength of the different uh, uh, copper, uh, the cost will change. Can you just, I mean, just give in a brief uh, uh, understanding, what is the difference between the class two and class five uh, conductor cost? Yeah, uh, you know, last uh, Friday evening, uh, there was a webinar of FSAI uh, discussion, a very good webinar, and uh, Dr. Bharat Modi from uh, own hospital in uh, yeah. Baroda, he made a presentation, a beautiful presentation. And what he has mentioned is uh, he has made a very good installation. He discussed about spacing and he also made some kind of research and uh, what his statement was. Uh, in a wire, uh, 97 percentage, I think 97 or 95 percentage of the cost of the wire is the cost of copper. Mm -hmm. Only 5 percentage uh, is related to the plastic. The plastic is nothing but the insulation. And that yeah, insulation, PVC. plastic itself, there are different kinds such as, you know, uh, FRLS, uh, uh, fire retardant, low smoke, fire retardant, then, uh, uh, you know, different categories are there. I don't want to go into yeah. it. Now, 97% uh, of the uh, cost of the wire is related to the conductor. Imagine a coil of uh, 1000 rupees, 970 rupees is uh, related to the cost of uh, the uh, copper. And uh, if a manufacturer can put 5% impurity in the copper, he gains a lot of money. So the actual money is uh, in the wire is with the conductor. And mm. what is the, the uh, there are five, there are four classes of wire, uh, copper conductor defined in the standard class one, class two, class five and class six. During our earlier days, uh, we were using solid conductor. Those are class one, solid conductors are, uh, or class one conductors are always solid. Class two and class five are flexible conductors. Standard Normally conductor. class five, uh, Yes, sir. Class 5 is actually designed for panel wiring because in a panel wiring, you will turn the wire, you will twist the wire and maximum length are, you know, maybe 2, 3, 4 meters, not the longer wire. Class 5, four, 6 is for welding wire. And the class mm. 2 wire, class 2 is the wire which is designed for house wiring. Not only house wiring, circuit wiring in a building. From the DB up to the last uh, circuit, uh, these wires uh, shall be used. And this is the standard worldwide. Even in India, this is the standard. But unfortunately, here the problem is class 5 wire, the conductor, uh, you know, the resistance is about 7% uh, higher, as I said in the presentation here. Uh, about yeah. 7 to 8% higher. The resistance is 7 to 8% higher. Uh, we can conclude it in two ways. One is the copper content is 7 to 8% lesser. Copper content yeah. is 7 to 8% lesser means the cost of the wire is 7 to 8% lesser. This is one chance. The second chance is maybe the instead of copper, something else is added. Eight percentage, maybe iron is added, some impurity is added. As a result, you know, the thickness is met, but the resistance is higher. But for sure, finally, what happens is the copper content in a class five wire is seven to eight percentage lesser than the class two conductor. As a result, the price difference uh, in the manufacturing of class five is eight percentage cheaper than, you know, class two wire. And we always have the habit of going to a shop, ask for a price. One fellow says thousand, one wire is thousand rupees, and the next wire is nine hundred and you know seventy rupees. So we go for the nine seventy rupees wire. 
and we never look into it whether it is class 5 or a class 2 but uh, yeah. you know fortunately uh, last years a uh, lot of awareness had come a uh, lot of manufacturers are slowly coming out with the class 2 conductors uh, my humble request is whenever you uh, buy a, a wire for a house wiring or uh, for for a, a, a circuit wiring uh, please use a class 2 conductor don't use class 5 conductor yeah that's true. I mean, normally uh, class two are uh, in earlier days. Even people used to have a uh, aluminium conductor for the house wiring. I mean, yeah. maybe I'm talking about uh, 20 years back, 25 years back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now nobody is using. I mean, everybody is no, using. No, no, no. Yes, sir. Most of the yeah. uh, you know, most of the standards are switched over to copper. Yeah, yeah. That's that's good. at least Probably up to. Is it fires. Yeah, that up to 10 mm square. I think everybody uses copper. About 10 mm square, maybe people will uh, use uh, aluminium. That's true. Yeah. Now, but the uh, see the uh, lesson is we have to learn that uh, first thing, uh, as you said, that design. So while designing, uh, we must strictly follow the require laid down standards and code of practice. I mean, it is very clearly later. Uh, uh, how, what design parameters you should consider while designing. I mean, one of the factor when he explained is the hot loop impedance, which is most important things. And uh, I mean, you must, one must calculate also okay, what will be the uh, fault current when any uh, fault happens and whether the, uh, you must also check the tripping curve of the MCB or MCCB or ACB, whether that uh, tripping device will trip uh, and that fault current or not and what would be the tripping time for that device that's most important thing. as a designer it's it's our responsibility and i think we should consider second thing is the you know uh, installation method and third thing is the quality of the material what we are selecting all those things you must remember but first important thing is there are three parameters one is the load current second thing is the cable uh, rated current and third thing is tripping device current so, I mean, you must select the low, uh, the tripping device current should be more than the rated current of the cable and rated current of the cable should be more than the load current. Otherwise, you know, there are always possibility that you will mess up the system. Am I right? Yes, sir. Correct. Correct. One more point which I wanted to add you add is uh, I said that there are two basic philosophies. Uh, one is the earthed system where the supply should uh, trip within a certain time. And the second one is unearthed system. Actually, in most yes. of the foreign countries, uh, the power supply to the, uh, you know, the power supply to the safety service. Safety service means the uh, the lighting system for the escape route, or the corridors, the fire survey, fire, you know, safety things. Uh, maybe the smoke extraction system and so on. Uh, the safety services uh, we are supposed to use an unearthed system yeah, because in an unearthed are... system uh, even if there is a fault nothing happens you can work with it yeah they, they i mean so, they insist on using the isolation transformer particularly for yes, the, all the yes. all the lighting installation that's yes you are right yeah yeah and the, along with the, not only the isolation transformer along with that you should also use the insulation monitoring device yeah that's right yeah so, excellent, excellent. Uh, I all about today's webinar, sir. Uh, excellent, really. I mean, even it, it has. Uh, I have been in this practice since last, I think, forty-eight hour uh, years. Even though you know, have added it to my knowledge. So I am sure that it must have helped a lot with uh, all other delegates. Uh, once again, thank you very much, Gopal Kumarji, and I will invite uh, Mr. Yash, uh, who is our uh, secretary, uh, chapter secretary at Gujarat. Uh, please, uh, Yashbhai, take over. Arsh? Arsha? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, where is Yashbhai? I think he has left the webinar, sir. Uh, it, it is saying it's offline. Okay. Uh, anyway, the, absolutely no problem. Uh, I, uh, on behalf of Yashbhai, I would like to, uh, you know, thank first Gopakumarji who accepted the, in a very, very short notice to, you know, give a share uh, his knowledge about the electrical safety systems. So uh, you can avoid the ignition of the fire by electrical system and particularly looking to the hospital 
uh, so because recently we had a big fire in hospital and i was very very keen to bring this topic on the table so thank you very much gopaji and I, what i feel that i'll once again invite you maybe after two three weeks to you know give more knowledge about the earthing system because there's a lot of misconception i mean 100 percent misconcept for the earthing system uh, i mean uh, nobody is very clear about how to do it uh, you can also add up the uh, uh, normally in the building uh, we use the uh, steel the which is used for the concreting is also being uh, earth uh, 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 with the equipotential bar that also you can cover it structural steel i mean to say so yeah. i mean uh, thank you very much gopaji and once again uh, i also thank all our uh, associate association uh, members who are who have very very uh, you know nicely attended the uh, seminar and i also thank all the uh, delegates who had raised the questions to increase uh, uh, to share their knowledge with uh, all the delegates also i take this opportunity to thank my executive team arshaji and uh, uh, Urvashi and uh, I think uh, Suresh ji, all three people who have made this webinar successful. Thanks, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye bye. -bye.